Father God, we just want to do your will. We want the truth and only the truth. Forgive us, Father, because we are truly made of dust and we're just human and we make mistakes. And I just ask, Lord, that you forgive me for my Tonight, Father, I just want to bring forth, Lord, what you've been doing in my life. And use it as a teaching tool for others to see that it is not, Father, as easy as we think it is. You said there will be persecution. You said there will be trials. You said also that you love us and you would never forsake us. You said that you chastise those that you love. You correct those that you love. So I thank you, my Father, for bringing that into my life. To give you all the glory and the honor, all ears to hear, out in the earth space and here in this congregation. May they hear the truth. May they hear my heart, and may they hear your heart. In Jesus' name we pray, and we say, Amen. And, um, Jeremiah 1, 5, let's turn there. When he told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. In Jeremiah 1, 5, right? So, he said that he knew him, right? He knew him. And he knows us. He knows us before we were formed in the room. What does that mean? So I guess what I did, I dug in. <laughs> I dug in. And I said, oh, wait a minute. If I didn't know this, there must be some out there that don't know it either. So I said, what am I going to do? Dug in. And I want to know what does that mean? So, before I go on, again, I apologize. I ask for forgiveness. I withdraw the lesson of Thursday, all of it. I don't want to take any of it, just all of it. And um, so, I apologize, and I apologize to you, ladies. So, we will continue. Forgiven? Yes. Amen. Let's continue. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Remember how I taught you there is no... There is there's a south pole, there's a north pole, there's a south pole. So the south pole, the south pole will go in, in, in the north pole. The north pole will go in, in the south pole. But in the east to the west, there is no Indian. And he said, I have forgiven you and your sins have thrown you to the ocean as far as the east is from the west. So, so amen to that. So in Hebrew, in the, in the Hebrew word, Translation of the word form in Jeremiah 1 5 when he said, I formed you. So, let, me, let me read verse 7. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The man became a living being. As part of God's creative act in forming Adam, the first human, from the dust of the ground, the term is typically used to describe a potter's process of molding clay into unique and useful pottery. That's what that word form will apply to. He informed you. He, he informed you. He said, I formed you. And that's what that connotation of that word form is. As part of God's creative act in forming Adam, the first human, from the dust of the ground, the term is typically used to describe a part of process of molding clay into unique and useful pottery, as in Jeremiah 18, chapter 18, verse 2 to 4. A master potter knows, this is what he says, knows, a master potter knows the creation he plans to from before, he knows that when a potter is going to sit down and he's going to do his work, guess what he has in mind? He has a picture 
of what he's going to do, right? He doesn't just go in there with a blank mindset of what he's going to do. No. He knows what he wants. He knows what he's going to make. So in that sense, he knows. Okay? Father God, because of his foreknowledge, he knows the he knows everything. He knows yesterday, he knows today, and he knows tomorrow. He knows every single soul that is being born. He knows everything. He created us with purpose. He created us and gave us all a gift to you. In our mother's womb, he sanctified us for a purpose. Now, he sanctified me to be a teacher in my mother's womb. He knew before knowledge that I was going to be doing this. He knows you. So when he told Jeremiah, I knew you, that's what he was saying, the foreknowledge. Do you understand what I'm saying? The foreknowledge. It, to me, it was, well, he knew me. You know? Okay, he knew me. So that, means, that means we have to be up there somewhere because he knew me. Not that we were up there like we are here, no. But at some point, he had knowledge of me. You know? But he's God. He has foreknowledge. So he already knew me, and he thought of me, and he said, Lenore, you're going to have this gift. You're going to have that gift. I'm not going to give you this because you'll go crazy. You're going to have this gift. You know, you're going to have that. You know, that's what he does. Why? Because he knew us. He knew what he wanted from us, so he made us for that purpose. He knew us. Um, a, a master potter knows the creation he plans to form before he sets the wheel to work. Just as God knew Jeremiah before he ever started taking him in his mother's womb, he reviewed him. God had set his sights on Jeremiah with plans to create him uniquely to be a spokesperson for the world, uh, for, uh, for the world of the Lord, the prophet. So he knew you before him. So when, when, when he says, I knew you before the foundation, that's what he meant. That's what he said. He knows. He knows those that are still yet to be born. Do you understand what I'm saying? Did you grasp that? Okay. The Hebrew verb translated new in Jeremiah 1.5 means more than mere intellect and knowledge. It is used to describe the most intimate of relationships. Before Jeremiah was conceived in his mother's womb, the Lord was thinking about him in the most profoundly personal way. Even before Jeremiah's conception and birth, God chose him to be set apart as a minister of God's word to the next. Father God knew us. He loves us. He loves you, Irma, Lorraine, Irma. When he thought of you and created you and formed you in your mother's womb, he put all his purpose in you, in our, in our life. He loves us. He knew us. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. Prior to his birth, Jeremiah had been set apart, which means he was sanctified, made holy, consecrated. This setting apart indicates the indication of an object, indicate, indicates the indication of an object, object or individual to a specific use. We know that when you sanctify something, it means to separate it for a special, for a special use. 
In the Bible, people or items set apart for the use for use by God included the Sabbath day. That was the day set apart. It was what consecrated. It was holy. And you can find that in your scripture. Let me tell you something about scripture now that I just remembered. Can I can I'm gonna I'm gonna just stop right here and say when this is what Father God was teaching me earlier. The purpose of see nothing can get to me unless it goes through him first. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing can come and attack me unless he allows it. Nothing can come against me unless it goes through him first. There is a purpose of this that happens to me. I learn from it, and you're going to learn from it. Number one, when I shared all the lesson yesterday. There were some good points in the lesson, too. Don't just miss the whole thing, but there were some good points there. But, but I'd rather everything go, you know, than to, for there to be a question mark. So, when I was sharing all this at the end, and I said, is there any question? Is there any, any, do we have any questions? That's why I opened, do we have any questions? There were no questions. One of the things that I've always told you to do is be alert. Not, don't take everything you hear as what, as, as being, being that. When I said that, I didn't intend it, it to be that. My, in my mind, it was totally different. But let me ask you something. When I share this about us living in heaven, and coming down from heaven. When I said that, did I give you any scripture? No. I didn't give you any scripture. Why did I not give you any scripture? Because it was, I didn't take it from the Bible. It was not in the Bible. I was sharing it from my heart. I was sharing it from my mind. Do you understand what I'm saying? I didn't say, whenever I say something that is, to me is very important, I say, here's scripture, boom, here's scripture, boom. I've inundated you with scripture. And when I was sharing this, I was just sharing this, like I said, it was supposed to be an analogy. It was supposed to be a metaphor. And, but my wording was wrong. I used the wrong word. I've always told you my vocabulary isn't big, so I use what I have. So, <laughs> so, so, what does that teach me? Be alert. Is, is there scripture behind it? If there's no scripture, dismiss it. It's not the word of God. It's me. It's me, my word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody was in there. Thank you. Thank you. That sounds like teacher a lot. <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. No. I, I, and that's what I pray. Father, if I say anything that is not of you, protect them. Protect them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're so gracious. <laughs> no, but it's for us to learn. It's for you to hear. I thank you out there that you caught that. I thank you. I thank God for you. And continue learn, continue hearing. And I hope that it wakes up the curiosity to come and hear more of my mistakes. <laughs> come and, and here I'm going to make big mistakes. Come and see me being corrected. I will sacrifice that. I'll sacrifice being corrected. So, <laughs> so 
but but you know I want you to learn. I want you to yeah. If there is no if there is yes yes amen correct you my advice and sister here saying you're always telling us you don't take my word for it you go home and look it up go home and look it up and then you know the, the best thing if you would have caught on to that and I, when I said is there any question and you would have asked me well where does it say in the Bible that we lived in heaven and that we're by our father's side where does it say I would tell you I don't know but I'll go home and find out you know that's what I my answer would have been because that's the truth I'm just you know this is true I said I'll go home and say and then I would have come to the same conclusion you know I would have looked for the same thing and I would have come to the same conclusion I'm all beat up. <laughs> I'm all beat up. Actually, when I'm going to let them up, I'm going to know what I did. <laughs> I'm all beat up, but that's okay. That's okay. I'll be beat up. I'll be beat up. And I know it's the enemy has been, other things that are happening in my life right now, and I know it's the enemy. I know it's the enemy attacking me. Because if you could cut off the head, you know, but I know it's the enemy. And I, I, I want to say this to you, and I want to say this out in the air, because I want he is the prince of the air. And I want him to hear, and I'm saying it right now because it's coming to me right now. And you didn't gain anything. You lost more. You lost more. Because I'm not going to stop, I'm going to continue. You just made me wiser. <laughs> you just made me wiser to get, uh, yes, yes, to dig into the word and to, re- if I was careful before, I'm going to be extra careful now. So, so thank you, Father God. Thank you. He is so good. He is so good and so compassionate. But, um, with that said, uh, we're going to continue learning about, about, uh, We'll come back to the seat next week. Not next week, the following week. Okay. So he said, um, I don't have a pencil and I didn't mark it. Yeah. Oh, you're busy. Okay. Did I concede my big room? Okay. Hmm. Where was I? Okay, right there. This is in the present. Okay, here I was. Okay, in the Bible, people or islands set apart for the use of God's day, of God includes the Sabbath day. And I already gave you that, right? The tabernacle and its furnishings furnish, were used for him. In Exodus 29, 44, and in Exodus 40, verse 9. And the priest, he was also the priest. Remember, they were anointed. They were sanctified, okay? And the priest, the tabernacle and the priest. And you can find that in Exodus chapter 29, verse 1, and in chapter 30, 30, verse 30. God knew Jeremiah intimately before conception. I think you know, I think, this is not, I'm not, I think, I think he may know us too. <laughs> he placed his mark upon him in the womb, reserving him for specialized tasks of a prophet. God knew Jeremiah intimately before conception. He placed his mark upon him in the womb, reserving him for the specialized task of a prophet. He he knew me in my mother's room, and he put his mark on me, knowing me that I'm going to be a teacher. I'm using myself as reference so that I won't make a mistake. <laughs> God also formed the prophet Isaiah in the womb to be his servant. Isaiah in chapter, 40, chapter 49, verse 5. The psalmist acknowledged that from birth I was cast on you. 
from my mother's womb, you have been my God. Yeah, something. When you were in your mother's womb, from my mother's womb, you have been my God. And that's in Psalm chapter 22, verse 10. The apostle Paul testified that God sent me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Galatians 1, 15. Remember when I said that um, the law was given uh, given to Moses, but grace and truth came to Jesus? Okay. So, as the Lord said his things on his sight on Jeremiah, choosing him to be a prophet, so Paul taught that God sent his love upon us. For those God for you, for those God for you, also predestined. All those that God for you, he predestined. We were his people. He predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. And you can find that in Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 30. God's purpose in calling people to salvation is that they be conformed into the image of His Son. You find that in Philippians chapter 3, verse 21, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 49, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. I'm not going to give you all these scriptures every time, okay? I'm just doing it right now because I just got fat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> okay. As a lo- uh, oh yeah. As the Lord said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Do you understand that better? So He says to us today. Whoever loves God is known by God. And you can find that. And you can find that in 1 Corinthians 8. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He says to us today, whoever loves God is known by God. Jeremiah heard the Lord say, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. As the prophet was receiving his call. At first, Jeremiah responded with self-doubt. Oh, sovereign Lord, Jeremiah said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. Before I got up here, I said, oh, Lord, I'm so scared I can't utter a word. (laughs) We plan things and he does a reverse. And you can find that in Jeremiah 1 6 in the New Living Translation. Jeremiah felt inadequate. Jeremiah felt inadequate, ineloquent, and too inexperienced to be God's ambassador. And that spoke to me so much when I was learning. He was telling me, he was telling me. You feel inadequate. You feel ineloquent. And you feel that your inexperience to be my ambassador. But the Lord assured Jeremiah, encouraged him simply to be faithful. And that's what he told me. You just be faithful. Be who you are. Say how you are. And listen to what I'm telling you. Do not be afraid, declared the Lord, for I am with you to deliver you. 
that Jeremiah went in. I took that to heart personally. God touched Jeremiah, putting his words in his mouth in Jeremiah 1 9. And from then on, the prophet never doubted his authenticity of his call. He never doubted it again. From then on, he never doubted. I tell you something. From this moment on, I'm not going to doubt that I am his ambassador. I'm not going to doubt that he did. He did gift me with a gift of speaking. And the enemy wants to take that away. And he did not. As a matter of fact, he's enforcing it. The experience changed Jeremiah forever. Throughout his lifetime, Jeremiah proclaimed the word of the Lord to Judah, to his ministry, and his ministry extended to the uh, Gentile nations. As believers, we can know that God is the master designer of our lives. He is a potter, molding, shaping, engineering the purpose and destiny of our story. All of us have a story. Your life is your story. We are all formed by His hand, Isaiah 64 eight. God knew us intimately before He formed us in the womb. And Isaiah 64 eight. Mm-hmm. God knew us intimately before He formed us in His in the womb. So He what for you? He knew us. He chose us in Christ. He will be with us always to fulfill His purpose through our lives. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserve it, but because that was His plan from before the beginning of time. To show us His grace through Jesus Christ. You find that in 2 Timothy 1.9 in the New Living Translation. You can also see it in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and in Ephesians 1.11. So when he says, I knew you before the foundation of the world, he doesn't know us like we know us. He knows us in a we say. He knows us in a way that it's hard for us to understand because we're not in that realm. But he, when a mother is, okay, here I go again. I need that example. This is an example. Example. When a mother is carrying her child, she is bonding with her child. When she has the child, her love for the child is a little bit different than the father's love. I remember one time, um, this guy was, uh, was, he had killed, I don't know how many people. And the mother lied for the son, but she turned in the husband, because the husband and the, and the, and the son went and did the killing. And the reporter asked her, how come you turned in your son? I mean, your husband, and you didn't turn in your son. He goes, because he's my son. There is a different type of love. It's a little bit more different. That's why the daddies are able, more able to discipline. The mamas get out of the house, and daddy's going to discipline. Because we're closer. There's, a, there's something different there. Well, why? Because we knew them before they were born. We felt them before they were born. Well, can you imagine Father? He knew us before he, whether in thought, well, I don't know how it is up in heaven, nobody does. Whether in thought, I don't know. I just know that his foreknowledge is so great that when he says he knew you, he knows what he's talking about. We may not understand it fully until we go to heaven, but he knows what he's talking about. And he loves us. 
and there's nothing that we can do, nothing that He will not forgive. He will forgive everything. Guess what I? Guess what I'm feeling like? <sighs> I'm feeling like I just got spanked and I feel repressed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, my son, he said when we, I was little, Mom, and he used to spank us because we did something, he used to spank us, I was able to sleep better. <laughs> After I cried, I was able to, that, I don't understand what he's saying now. <laughs> but you know what? We need correction. We need to receive it. We need to thank him for it. And I thank you for it. You're doing a good job. You're paying attention. You're doing a good job. You're paying attention. Keep on. Keep on paying attention. Don't be fooled. Don't go crazy. Just believe in what you hear. Always, always, if the word does not back it up, don't take it to heart. If the word does not back it up, the word is a plumb line. I've always told you the word is a plumb line. So, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Father, for giving me the courage. Thank you, my Father, for giving me the insight. Thank you, my Father, for speaking for me and being with me. Heavenly Father, I give you all the glory and the honor for you are wonderful, Father, and you may lead us in a wonderful way, Father. I just thank you, Father, for the work that you've done. I thank you for all those around me that love me and understand, Father. I thank you, Father, for their grace and their forgiveness and their mercy, Father, for their compassion over me, my Lord. I thank you, Father. Bless them, my Father. Bless them with all that they have, my God. Father God, I pray that you open up the heavens and bless them, Father. If they have any need, Lord, if they, whatever, whatever they need, Father, bless them, Lord. Bless them, for they have blessed me richly, Lord. Just, just richly, Father. So I thank you. I thank you for all those loved ones that you put around me, Lord. They, Father, encourage me. They lift me up, Lord. They are the ones, Father, that uh, help me. And, restore, and help me to restore me and give me strength. Father, you use them. You use them, Father, to strengthen me, and I thank you. You are the main source. You are my main strength. You are the air that I breathe. You are my everything. So thank you for your correction. Thank you, Father, that you've corrected us all. We give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray and we say, Amen. Amen. Amen.